Welcome back to the rating climb against the chess.com bots with 1100. So against D3, I'm not going to overthink it. We're going to get two pawns in the center. Whenever you can start the game this way, it's usually a good thing to do. Okay, A4. What's the problem with A4? Well, white's not doing anything. They're not developing their pieces. And this doesn't even activate the rook because I would take it. It's basically a wasted move. So we're going to keep developing. doesn't really matter. You could really play either knight. Uh, I'm going to consider pushing forward to chase the knight, but it looks like white's got that defended, so I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to just continue developing. Of course, this is defended, so I'm not worried about that. And, well, <laughs> there you go. Uh, I will take it because I already checked that it was defended. Thank you, Aziz. Okay, he plays e4. I'm ahead, so trading stuff is probably good, so I think I'll most likely just capture it. Let's just look if there are any better moves. Bishop g4, but there's bishop e2. Probably doesn't do too much. We could just ignore that and develop another piece. Maybe that's even better, because if they take me, I could just recapture with the queen. All right, so yeah, maybe I'll just ignore it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with taking it, but what about bishop c5? Let's think about this. d4 is not an option because we would take it. But c3 and then d4 could be an option. But after c3, maybe then we take. Do we walk into d4? Check. It gets a little bit tricky, but I might have a nice little tactic. Maybe, maybe not. All right, I'm going to take the pawn. I don't want to have to like keep thinking about getting forked after c3. So I feel like just taking simplifies that and makes it easy. Okay, since I'm ahead, trading is good. So let's, let's go ahead. We'll just trade everything. Trade everything. Okay, great. And now it's a question of, do I go for the check? And probably the answer is no, because I'm going to lose a tempo. Actually, I just noticed a little tactic. Look at that. We do have the fork where we get the rook. So check f3 takes bishop e2 to pin me. Doesn't really worry me. I could just go back and defend my bishop. Yeah, I didn't see that initially, but upon further investigation, since I have the fork, I will do that. And the nice thing about this is it also gets ready to castle, which is going to be another check. On Black's team. Okay, so he sidesteps. And I'm still thinking of castling. We have an immediate checkmate threat. Now, White could stop that with bishop e2. I'd be happy to trade. Could play f3. And yeah, let's see. We could sacrifice the king move. Yeah, I probably wouldn't sacrifice. I'd probably just retreat. I still think it's fine. I still think it's a good move. I want to get my king out of the center anyway. And I really just activate this rook. It blocks. Interesting. So. Why would I do that? I mean, there looks like there could be a fork here, but like, I don't think I really want to move there. I mean, maybe I do because follow up. Probably I just want to develop the bishop, right? Like none of these tactics are just jumping out at me as like, I need to play this because it's such a great move. So I think I'm just going to develop. Now the question is, where do we put the bishop? I like here for the aggressive placement. I just have to be careful. What happens on B4? Does my bishop get trapped by the pawns? Let's see, I could go here, but there's also c3, b4, a5. Yeah, so I think my bishop would just get trapped. So unfortunately, that's not going to work. And so instead, I'll just go to e7. I don't really want to block this right now. I feel like it's pretty effective. That's why I chose e7, and I can also maybe come over here. So let's think. Uh, we want to go here with our rook, probably. We can't, so we could play c6, just make the bishop move, and then we could play rook e8. That looks pretty good. Or we could continue, like I mentioned, putting the bishop here. I'm scanning for tactics again on this square. Like maybe, is that a fork? Is it actually, is that a fork on the two pawns? If you take, I take with a check. The king has to move and then I'm going to snap off this bishop. Is my knight going to get trapped in that situation after f3? That would be my only concern. And actually, maybe it will. Because if the knight's trapped and the rook comes over, I actually would lose my knight. So yeah, maybe getting a little too fancy there. I guess I won't do that. Let's just go ahead and play c6 in a temple, force the bishop to move. Okay, I'm ahead. I'm up a piece. I'm pretty comfortable winning an endgame that way. Let's trade off the, the bishop. Okay, and again, I probably want to go here and trade this. He could play bishop c3. So maybe I'll go ahead and prepare for that with bishop f6 here. Okay, that seems like a wasted move. Let's continue now with knight to c4. Okay, looks like a free pawn. Question is, do I have any better moves? Like maybe bringing the rook over? That looks pretty powerful, and I could take that pawn later. Or I could just take it right away and be happy with my pawn. Also looks very good. 
Let's start with this move just because I really want all my pieces to be activated before I go pawn grabbing. Okay, he's not going to stop me. This one definitely looks like a great move. Probably going to force the bishop to go back and we can trade. There we go. And I think I will go ahead. Let's just see. Actually, we also have this check because this guy's pinned. Is that a more powerful move? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe it is, actually. Getting the rook on the second rank is usually a good idea. King goes this way to get out of the pin. Then we could take here. If the king goes straight back, well, then we could keep taking stuff. So I think I will actually do that. Nice little move there. Rook to d2 check. Ah, he goes up. Okay, I didn't think about that. That's actually an oversight on my part because now I have both rooks are being attacked. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, missed that one. Okay. So, um, the question is, how do I mitigate the damage here? Of course, I'm still up a piece, so it's going to still be a winning position, but I did miscalculate that. I think the best thing now is to say, look, I'm going to go ahead and sack the exchange here, and then I can at least keep grabbing pawns, which is not terrible. So let's let's do that. Unfortunately, I did miss that one. Okay, and now, probably we just take the pawns. We're still in a... Pretty pretty easy to win position because the two pieces for the rook is going to be better. And on top of that, we're just grabbing all these pawns. So it's not like it's, you know, it's not like we're going to lose. But just shows you have to be careful or you can make those mistakes towards the end. Okay, how do we keep hunting the pawns? I mean, I could also think about the king, but I think I'm going to just target maybe this pawn right here. Or let's see, just kind of scanning for like if there are some patterns with the the pieces where I could maybe checkmate the king. Maybe I actually can think about this depending on where the king goes. Yeah, okay, so here's an idea. How about we go here, attack the rook, and then when the rook moves, we play bishop e5 and we win this guy. Nice little tactic there. Let's do that. And then we'll follow it up. And... Go ahead and take the rook. Okay, so at this point, three minutes. I do want to start looking for ways to simplify and finish off this game so I don't get too low on time. So I'm going to keep hunting the pawns, try to go for a pass pawn here. Go ahead and grab this guy. And let me... Again, just targeting the pawns here. Yep, I'll take it. And now I'm going to start just pushing these guys. Seems like that's probably the... What is... All right, well, we're going to take that and then push the pawns for the win. Let's just go here and push this guy. Cutting off the king so it can't stop my pawn. Now I can basically pre-move it as long as white doesn't like try to do this and take me here. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, let's watch this pawn push here. One of these guys might push forward. Get the queen. Now we can do a simple ladder checkmate. All right, good game, Aziz. Let's go on to the next bot. Laura, 1100. Okay, let's go ahead, get a pawn in the center. Let's defend that. Bishop to b5. So the opening that I've been playing lately, the Cozio defense. The idea is that the knight jumps over. To, ooh, interesting move, Rook <laughs> Almost like a mouse slip. Like, I went to castle, but I moved the rug instead. Interesting. Um, normally, you bring the knight over here to g6. And I think I will go ahead and continue with the normal uh, plan here. You don't want to leave it permanently blocking your bishop, so you just go ahead and reroute it. And we can recapture this way. Unleash this bishop. Notice the knight is actually useful there, defending our pawn. Queen to e2, not really concerned by that. I think this makes sense. I could actually go knight of four and win a pawn. Which, yeah, that's that's actually pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Primarily, not really because I care about the pawn so much. Ooh. What I was going to say is, I, you know, if the queen moved and I captured here, the check would force the king to move, then the king would be stuck in the center. That was why I was really happy about that. In this case, of course, obviously we take the queen. Okay. Well, let's pin, trade some pieces. It's a very straightforward game if we trade. 
and rather than taking it right away let me go ahead and develop another piece just putting my pieces on good squares and I'm thinking about queen here to attack this although I guess d3 is easy to deal with that maybe queen f6 to threaten this way and also get ready to castle yeah that looks even better let's do that instead so here we go this is the threat and they doesn't defend that so we will go ahead and take that right very good do we have anything we want to capture no not just yet uh probably castling is good i could also castle this way and play f5 i'm gonna go queenside i like just bringing in the rook this way okay queen's under attack so we should probably move that let's go back here backs a pawn it's away from the knight all right free pawn how do we want to take it I'm thinking the rook. And not only do I create a threat here with my rook, but I also clear the way for this guy to come over and create a battery lining up the rooks on the D file, which looks fantastic. So let's do it that way. Okay, I could worry about that, but I'm really not that concerned. I think I wanna just keep attacking. So let's line up the rooks here. Okay, so now I see a little tactic. There's a, there's a mating pattern you guys always want to be aware of. And actually, before I say anything else, what do you think the best move is here for black? You get a chance to look at that. I think the move is rook takes e4. And it has to do with this mating pattern when you have a queen or a bishop across the slicing kind of across the king like this, and a rook can come down. That's usually checkmate, as long as there's like a piece here stopping the king from escaping. And that's what I see here. If the knight takes, I have checkmate. So that's a you know, a free pawn, but it also exposes the king, and now I can continue hunting the king. Let's see, where is the checkmate? Queen can come here, or queen can come here. Or... Let's see, I don't exactly see checkmate, but it's got to be pretty close. Ah, here, I can go here as well, and then take this. Okay, that looks better, yeah. I, I figured there was something, I just didn't see it right away. But there we go. And because the bishop is helping, we can grab this as well. King's going to either have to go back and get checkmated here or come up and get checkmated here. Okay, good game, Laura. Got to be more careful with the queen. Um, okay, let's see who is next. Oh, I clicked new bot instead of next bot. My bad. Um, next would be Sven. Here we go. And good luck to Sven. Plays the English opening. I'm going to play e5, and we'll see if we get a chance to play the bishop b4 line. Perfect. We do get to do this. So a lot of people who play the English will immediately follow it with knight to c3. And what I like to do is play bishop to b4. And this is uh, it's kind of a surprising move to a lot of Sicilian players. I mean, uh, English players. And what I do is usually just trade it off. And then I put my pawns, or most of my pawns, on dark squares because I've gotten rid of that bishop. And, okay, I'm not really worried about the check. I'm probably just going to block. Let's block with the knight. And what happens when you put all your pawns on the dark squares like this is this bishop doesn't have anywhere to go. A nice little system. I've talked about it before on the channel. Okay, Ben is, is playing some bad moves here. I'm, I'm just going to continue developing, get ready to castle. But notice this, this bishop's not really going to have much to do. Wow, that is a lot of rook moves, my friend. Okay, so here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Look at this. Where's the bishop going to go to? Like, what do you do if you have this bishop? Watch this. See you know what I'm doing? Bishop has nowhere to go. You can't go there. 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 You could go here, but what does that do? You could go here, but what does that do? So this is just a nice little system. Usually you could put the bishop here or here, depending on what you're trying to do. You can slide your king over if you're worried about this diagonal. And it's a very annoying system for, for English players to deal with because they kind of have this bishop that doesn't really do much. And then eventually, once I get all my pieces developed, okay, well, he's trying to make something happen, but it looks to me like it's just a free pawn. So I guess we just take it. Um, what I was going to say is once I get all my pieces ready, usually I'll start pushing this F pawn forward and attack over here. So maybe bring the rook somewhere and then start pushing forward. Now, Sven is, is doing all kinds of weird stuff that's obviously going to change my plan, but that's a nice little system that you guys can use against the English. Okay, so what's he doing? Moving his king, that can't be good. Let's just put another piece lined up on it, right? Why not? 
Okay, now we've got all our pieces pretty much mobilized. So now is when you want to start looking for tactics or ways to bust through and open up the king. Okay, whenever your king is safe, your opponent's king is not safe, that's the signal. It's time to attack the king. So how do we do that is the big question. That is the big question. Like e4, pretty good because I'm just going to take and I open up another file. Why not? A lot of times the danger with moves like this is that they'll push by and lock everything up. But in this case, you can't do that because I'm, I'm ready to capture it here. So, okay, probably just going to take. And I'm just chipping away at, you know, the king, opening up these files. And look, look at this. Now, rook to e8 seems like a good move because it's involving the rook this way. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, here's an idea. Uh, there's a lot of ideas. One would be bringing the knight in just to attack this way. And also take advantage of this square right here. Maybe the rook could come down. Knight could jump in. But also I could play knight a5. Take the queen and then c4 to just chip away that way here. C5 and just keep attacking. So both of those plans look great. Let's go with this one. Uh, because this I think is just... Okay, am I worried? Let's be a little careful. There's a bishop. No, it's not enough pieces. Let's play c4. And notice... If he pushes, I have c5. Yeah, here we go. And I can just keep attacking, and eventually we're we're getting to the king, right? Notice how the king is running out of options here. So let's go ahead and take. Of course, I'm looking for checkmate, but there's no there's no bishop there right now. So, okay. And now it's just a question of how do we break through? Probably knight f5 to take that guy. I could go knight c6 as well, but I don't really want to block this. And so knight f5, I think, makes sense. Okay. There's that lined up. I don't really care. Even if queens get traded, that's okay. I'm still going to be attacking and checkmating this king. There we go. And it, it took some work. I mean, it took quite a few moves, but you keep chipping away with your pawns, especially once you're mobilized and your pieces are in, in good position, you can take your time and you just gradually chip away. And now we've finally gotten to the king and start to think about checkmating or or whatever so i'm gonna go ahead and grab the free pawn because my rook was under attack anyway so let's go ahead and do that and now i think i'm gonna come in here and we are really cutting off the the king king's options here maybe we could just go again or we push this yeah let's just keep going with the rooks until white's uh figures out a way okay that's not a great option option number one we sack for two pieces which is a good trade but even better, look at this. We just take here, and this guy's trapped. So I could also play c3, check if I want to throw that move in. Or I could save that for later. Yeah, let's go ahead. We'll take the rook for now. Wow, all right. I'm going to just take it. It's free material. Why not? Now I'll play c3, check, put the pressure on the king. And at this point, of course I'm looking for back rank checkmates. I don't want to throw the game. So you have to watch out for that, but I'm okay. The rook can't go through the pawn. And I'm also looking for how do I checkmate this guy? So I would like my knight to be able to jump here, maybe. So bishop here looks like a good option. Um just sacrificing to just get rid of these pieces also looks like a good option. Let's start with the bishop move. Start with this one, getting ready. Uh-huh. So here's another tactic that's popping up. There's just so many good good ways to do this. This one looks maybe like the best. Since he's given us that, we'll go ahead and take the rook. All right, and rather than hurt my brain trying to think about what exactly I can do to, to checkmate, I'm just going to sack the rook for the two pieces, clear everything out of the way, get a queen, and win the game. It's that easy. Or, or I checkmate with a knight, a rook, and a pawn because that's kind of cool. How do we do that? Check. Da, 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 da. Let me go ahead. What I'm doing here is boxing in the king for, for one. Then I'm coming in with the knight. And you have to be careful because you don't want a stalemate. But there's not a stalemate because white has these pawns. So I'm setting up the mating net. Look at that. And look at that. Okay. And now all we have to do is bring the rook over for the checkmate. So sometimes it's 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 okay to have a little fun with, with the bots. All right. That's it, guys. Those are the three 1,100 rated bots. Next time, we'll play against Maria. 
And hopefully we'll start to get a bit of a challenge because right now it's been a little bit easy. I'm a little bit, uh, what's the word, disappointed in the, the fight that the bots have been putting up. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay sharp. Play smart. Take care.